You are listening to the Coach's Locker Podcast with Chris Ford, a place for all coaches to call home. The Coach's Locker Podcast is a part of the Football Coaching Podcast Network. Please visit footballcoachingpodcast.com to hear and see our entire lineup of top football coaches coming to you every single podcast with valuable information to help you and your program. The Coach's Locker Podcast with Chris Ford exists to help prepare coaches to be hired for the job of their dreams and to provide coaches with dynamite resources to become even more successful in their field. You can reach me on Twitter at at Coach4, that's at C-O-A-C-H-F-O-R-E, and my podcast home is at 8laces.org forward slash podcast. That's 8laces, E-I-G-H-T-L-A-C-E-S, dot org forward slash podcast welcome to the coach's locker podcast with chris ford now let's get out All right, welcome back from that intro, and Joe, I'm excited to have you on here. Thank you very much for your time this morning. My pleasure to be here, Coach. I'm a, I'm a, I'm, I'm a fan and a fo- follower, sir. So it's a, it's an honor to be here. Joe, we do something called the kick off, the tip off, and the first pitch. Just a brief little exercise here to allow the listeners to get to know just a little bit about Joe Rafter. Will you tell us, Coach, what's the first team you played on, a long time ago? And what do you remember from that team? Well, that's a, that's a, that's a quite a question, man. That, that really was a long time ago. I think the first team I ever played on was um, a YMCA basketball team when I was, I think I was five years old. Um, I, I remember I was so excited to have my, you know, have a pair of basketball sneaks and I had a maroon YMCA t-shirt. Um, I, I don't know any, I don't recall any of the games or any of the kids or, um, any of the coaches. I just remember how, how proud I was to be a part of a team and to be out there playing a sport that I, uh, I, I enjoyed. Absolutely. Sports are, uh, such a great thing. So, and then you, you started there playing basketball. How about the last team you ever played on and, and kind of what you remember from that team coach? So the last team I played on was in um, uh, my college football team. Uh, I played college football at Catholic University in Washington, D.C. I was a defensive end. Um, what I remember of, of that are just brothers. I mean, yeah. uh, I'm get a little emotional here. They, they, the guys who I played with, who, you know, I was up at 5 o'clock in the morning going to practice, and um, the bonds that we have – um, I mean, they still, you know, to this day, 30 years later, um, these guys are, you know, the brothers to me. One of them is actually a, a head coach here in the San Francisco Bay Area. Um, and, you know, we're connected and we and we keep talking to each other. And we just, you know, because we share this passion for this sport and we and the time we shared on the football field and the buses and all that kind of good stuff, um, it, it's just it what I remember is just, and, and what it means to me is just a, a, a brotherhood. There's, there's nothing like that. We, uh, we're in a, I'm in a group chat with like 10 friends, you know, I grew up with, we all played high school football together and it's just, you know, last night, how in the world it just, it came up. We were talking about, you know, one, one certain game, our senior season in a chat last night, here we are 25 years removed and and uh you know it's just it's awesome we, we'll share that forever nobody can ever take that stuff away from us and and the same with with you and your teammates and it's one of the reasons i love the sport coach right who's been your main mentor uh in the coaching profession so um you know the 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 coaches i had growing up um my high school football coach, uh, my defensive coordinator, um, God rest his soul, Jerry Ambrosi, um, he, he had a huge influence on me. And then my college 
coach, uh, Coach Dwight Ross Brooks, um, played linebacker at Virginia Tech, um, still a friend of mine out of this day. Um, th- those guys absolutely influenced me as a coach. And, and you know, beyond that, the, the, the next greatest impact on me um, current day um, is uh, uh, Joe Ehrman. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you you're familiar with him or you know if your yeah. listeners are, but um, the guy is amazing with what he's his philosophies, his teachings. I mean, I've I've brought it into my professional work. Um, you know, I I run the Southern Broncos here in uh, Larkspur, California, and we our culture is um, laced with Joe's uh, beliefs and philosophies. Um, I'm a student of his work. Um, and a, 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 I'll say a lay practitioner. I've never been through any of his specific courses, but I'm, I've read his stuff. Um, I've seen him speak. Um, and then lastly, you know, my father, my, I, growing up, um, I played a lot of sports. I played basketball, baseball, swam, um, football. Um, and my dad coached me in, uh, in, in baseball. And, uh, from ever since I was really, really, young, that was his sport. And, uh, you know, his style, his, his meaner, um, you know, I've, I've, uh, I've embraced that over, over the years. Outstanding. Coach, what do you think, how long have you coached, uh, football? So let me see, uh, I'm going on my 14th year okay. coming up. And what would you say is your worst mistake ever as a coach? Ugh. So I was, uh. I'll never forget this. I, I, um, I was out of college, right out of college. I coached my high school, uh, Archmere Academy in, uh, Clinton, Delaware for two years. And, uh, after that it was, I couldn't maintain the high school commitment. And I was working with a, uh, a guy and, uh, he had a son who was playing, uh, youth tackle football for the Conestoga general, which was a, 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 uh, Pop Warner organization in the suburbs of Philly. And uh, he asked me to coach with him. We had 14 kids on the team. Uh, and this was, this was quite some time ago. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I, had, I was playing college ball. Then I coached high school. And then I get down to the youth level. And this is like a U14 team. And, uh, you know, I was, I don't know, 26, 25, 24, something like that. Um, so I was young. I was, um, I wasn't a good coach. I, I really, you know, I knew the sport to the extent that I could at the age of 24. Um, but I wasn't a good coach and I, I, I just didn't have patience. And, you know, I, I lost the kids mm. because I didn't have, have patience. And what I learned from that was to, to coach youth you, know, you really have to, you got to take the sport and the complexities and sophistications that exist at the professional college and high school level. And you have to really decompose it and break it down into, you know, consumable bite size steps for the youth. Um, and, and at the youth level, you really have to break it down into like, you know, really, really small micro steps because you're dealing with, you know, seven, eight, nine, you know, through 14 year old kids and they're, they're just not, you know, they're not, at, they're, they're not physically developed. They're not as emotionally developed. There's, they're not as intellectually developed. They're not as socially developed as what you, you know, what you have at the high school or at, at college level. And, you know, at the end of that season, I, I, I recall kind of looking in the mirror and saying, you know, coaching youth, youth football, I'm done. It's just not for me. Uh. I, I'm, you know, I do not want to do this because I, I didn't want to have to put myself through the process of breaking the and down so much into these little micro steps. And then of course, you know, I don't know, seven, eight years later, I had my first son. Um, and then, then my second son, my third son comes along a couple years after that. And, you know, coaching my son on a football field is like heaven on earth. Nothing like and, it. Right? Uh, not, nothing like it. So, um, you know, facing into that um, and, and kind of taking ownership, you know, to be honest with you, uh, I just, I wasn't a good coach. 
when I started. You know, I think I, I think what you said there's dramatic. You know, facing that ownership. I know there's a. I became a head coach at, at 27. You know, very young. And uh, boy, I, I look back at some of the stupid stuff I did and said, especially that first year as a head coach with a little bit of a power trip. And it's like, I owe a lot of those kids apologies, you know? <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, that, and, you, and, know, you know, sign of maturity, what you just said, you know, being able to own up to it and then, and grow from there. Yeah. And coach, it, it, you know, if I bring that to present day, like my, my you know, my philosophy is, and, and I say this to our coaches and, in the Broncos and we're, you know, hundred percent volunteer organization. I have about 25 dad, mostly dads, a couple of non dads, um, coaching, you know, seven through 14 year olds across four or five teams every, every year. And, and we do a clinic. And what I, I share with them is, you know, these, these young men and women, we're going to be coaching. They're on a developmental path. They're trying to improve themselves as a football player and as an athlete and as a young man or, uh, as a young woman. And so are we as coaches. Like you have to, you have to look at the way you're coaching and be critical of yourself and say, how can I be a better coach? In the same way that you're saying to your, your, you know, your your player, how can you be a better lineman or, you know, or a quarterback? You have to look in the mirror and challenge yourself to the same extent, if not more. You're challenging these players. So, so we, you know, I try and create that learning environment within the Broncos. That you know, it's not just the players we're developing. We're actually developing ourselves through coaching these uh, young kids. Boy, that's uh, that's awesome. That yeah, that's that's spot on. Love it. We we are we we need to change and evolve and get better as well. What what would you say is your greatest accomplishment as a coach, Joe? You know, I I I'd say um, the culture we've installed in uh in the broncos um i mean he's you know i coach with these men he's you know he's these men and women and the parents they come from all walks of life you know yeah we're in we're in county and a lot of people are going to say okay you, you know you, you're 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 a very narrow demographic there and, and 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 respectfully we're not um we actually have lots of people from all walks of life and um you know, we, we, we walk around, we tell each other, we love each other um, as coaches, as players, as parents, and uh, that, that culture. And it's, it's a, you know, coach, when, when I first got exposed to Joe Ehrman, when I was back in Philly and I was running that, uh, I ended up going back to the Conestoga Generals and becoming the, the president of that when I coached and had a terrible experience as a, uh, as a uh, 24 year old. Um, and, uh, yeah, I, I started trying to build that culture out there, uh, but I really, I, I held back. I was really reluctant on, frankly, using the word love and uh, you know, coming out here to the Broncos and uh, fully embracing what, you know, um, how I was treated as and coached through high school and college and youth and putting that into practice and embracing the fact that I'm going to say to these men, who are, you know, financial services guys, they're blue collar workers, they're, um, you know, all different um, backgrounds and histories, you know, giving them hugs and telling them how much I love them and I appreciate them for, for the time that they give our community through volunteering for the Broncos. I'm, that's absolutely my, my greatest um, accomplishment as a coach. Yeah, I know you referred to Joe Erdman earlier. Uh... Yeah, I know that's what that's what he's all about as well, right? Is that is, is showing that love, talking about that love, and and uh, building up that side of our our coaching. That's that's awesome, Joe. What's your favorite vacation spot? Oh, um, probably a beach. A beach. Uh, there you just go. about anywhere. Um, I like I like to uh, have my feet in the sand. I like to have have some warmth. Um, have something cold in my hand to enjoy. Um. Yeah, the, the, and, and a beach on an, on an, on an ocean, a large, you know, I'm not so much a lake guy. Um, I like, uh, you know, big, big bodies of water and, uh, um, sun and fun. Coach, what, uh, what's your favorite thing to do? Tell us what you do briefly, what you do for a living. 
Sure. So I'm a management consultant. I have my own um, uh, company called Business Change Leaders. Um, I consult with um, large organizations um, in the U.S. and and uh, and beyond to help them reshape their business models when their business models under attack and their their models come under attack. Typically, competitors or technology that that begin to restructure their business. And one of the greatest examples I can give you is um, I worked uh, fairly extensively in the Yellow Pages business, and you know everyone. Guys our age are going to remember the, you know, the book that gets dropped off at your doorstep. Well, nobody does that anymore. Nobody looks at the book. Um, everyone goes online and just Googles things. So I've helped a lot of organizations navigate that transition from print analog based businesses into digital businesses and enhancing their uh, uh, customer experience along the way. And we'll get into it more later, but I think uh, there's there's no doubt that that business background and acumen you have played a key role in in uh, what we went through here in, in youth football legislation in California. We'll, we'll get into that, but so outside of that business and outside of uh, coaching and your family, because most people are going to say family to this question, but do you have any other hobbies or how do you like to enjoy life outside of uh, business, coaching, family? Is there any time uh, left, I, I guess, to... is the question, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, I, I, so I love to read um, I, I, and listen to music, um, just about any kind of music. Um, although country, I'm not a huge fan of, but um, just about any, any music I'll enjoy. Um, and, and exercising. So you know, I, I, I like to walk or run, just be outside, hike, um, just enjoy the fresh air and the outdoors. You lost me now, Coach. Not liking country music, man. That's my favorite. <laughs> really, Coach? I oh, yeah. Know that. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, Joe, I want to you have, have you on. You have to educate me. What's that? You have to educate me on that, then. Absolutely. Hey, I got – here's a funny story. Back in uh, – it was 1992. I was not a country guy, and we got stuck out at uh, – we, we were camping. My family was out camping. And I got one radio station. If you're in Southern California, you know K-Frog, 95.1 K-Frog. And a good, good friend of mine had introduced me to country music, but I didn't like it much. Well, for three days on this little old transistor radio, you know, I got one station in. And I I always love having some background music playing. And it was 95.1. And I I fell in love with country music that weekend. So uh, I guess that was a good thing about getting stuck on one channel. Well, as I said on the intro, I wanted to spend some time with you this morning um, to talk about youth football in California and kind of the, the whole process we went through in this state on on fighting a bill to ban youth football that came out. And uh, your leadership uh, among, you know, among a whole lot of folks, this is not a, a one-man ban. It took a whole lot of people to pull together in various parts of the state. I mean, our state is huge. Uh, but you have kind of, um, been, been one of those, you know, key three guys along with, uh, Steve Famiano and Ron White to, to have, you know, put together the California Youth Football Alliance. And I wanted to talk about that today. Some folks around the nation might not be interested in listening to this, but I encourage you to. And the reason I encourage you to is... There's, there's these ban- – what are we at, five states now, Joe, where they've tried to outlaw youth football in some form or fashion? Seven. Seven states now. I'm a little out of touch already. So seven different states. If it hasn't happened in your area yet, it will, I believe, at some day. Uh, you know, they'll try to change this sport in some form or fashion, like I said. So I thought it would be intriguing to, to have Joe on to talk about what we went through here. In, in more specific detail than I could give you because, um, well, as I said on the intro, uh, you know, we kind of started to get the ball rolling, but I was a big believer it had to be youth guys really taking this thing on and and because they have the expertise. So Joe is one of those guys who stepped up. So Joe, take us back. I believe it was February of 18, right? 2018? Yep. When this bill, th- this idea here in California came out to – to ban youth tackle football. Uh, everything from high school below, legislatures were convinced that we just need to ban it. 
and I got a call one day as I as I kind of briefly talked about earlier in this intro for today um, and said, hey, we need your help. And so I, I put together this conference call. I really had no idea where to start. We got a huge state. <laughs> how, how do we start getting people to band together? But that's what the call came to me. We need help banding together youth football guys. So I said, well, let's try to get on a conference call to make that happen. Joe, you what intrigued you? Why did you get on that conference call? I think we had between 40 to 50 guys that first night. What intrigued you about getting on that call and, and starting a leadership role at that point? So it was, um, you know, I was coming off. I don't, I don't know. I don't know if you know this, but I'm a, I know, you know, I'm from Philly, but I'm a huge Eagles fan. Yep. Um, still season ticket holder actually. And uh, they had just won the Super Bowl that, that Sunday. So I was on cloud nine. Like I was happy as could be. And Friday, the tweet goes out and says, you know, there's, there's a, a band tackle football. And that Monday night, I think, you know, a week after the Super Bowl, you know, is is when we got on that call. And, you know, I I, I don't even remember exactly how I got the information. Um, I, I, I know that somebody, I think, got us in contact. Um, and then one of my board members actually found, I think, I think was following you on Twitter and said, hey, you know, you, you need to hop on this call and some people who are, who are, you know, are organizing around this. Um, I mean, so that, that's how it like mechanically happened. I think from a passion perspective, why did I actually get on the call? I mean, I would not be the man I am today if it wasn't for the sport of tackle football and those men who coach me, um, and the, and the, 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 the brothers I played with, um, I just, I, I would be different. And yeah, you know, I, I I said this up in Sacramento um, to a couple of the uh, assembly members and senators. You know, I, I said, you know, I was Roly Poly Johnny growing up. You know, I football is where I found myself. Um, it the the kind of athleticism that that I've been blessed to have works and is um, uh, honored and is a huge part of the sport of tackle football. And unfortunately it's not a part of baseball and it, and my, my basketball days ran out <laughs> um, from, you know, from when I was five. And, and so, um, you know, how, how could I turn my back on something that I love so much? I had to get involved. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I never played youth football. I didn't start football until I was in high school. Uh, my sons don't, they, they have never played youth tackle football um, uh, my, my 13 year old now going into eighth grade, he's going to try it next year. I think I really wanted him to try it this year, but, but he didn't want to, and I'm not going to force him. But, uh, I, I knew that, uh, when I first heard and read this bill that it was a Friday in February, I was like, if you get, first of all, this is asinine from a government point of view. Like, I don't think government should, you know, ban a youth sport. Um, second of all, if you do, there's going to be ramifications at the high school level where, you know, I spent 17 years coaching this great game at high school and, and I've seen it, you know, football used in the lives of so many kids. And so if, if we take away the sport at, at the younger age, you're going to have kids just not ever want to try it at high school. Um, you know, and, and then you're going to take away so many opportunities to develop young men and women. And so I was just totally against it. Um, but I appreciate you sharing your journey there. So about a week later, you know, we had another call. That call went from about 40 or 50 on that first conference call down to, I, you know, I think less than 10, seven or eight guys. Um, and you were one of those guys to call back in. So why did you come back onto that call? Well, because it, it, it was, I mean, you, at the end of the first call, I recall, I remember as clear as day, you said, all right, so we got about 40 people on this call. Most of them are high school guys. We got a couple of youth people on the call. The high school community can't carry this. Um, this is really, an, you know, a, a, an attack that's directed at the youth and the youth are the ones that are going to have to stand up. And, 
you know, and you say, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to organize this, but I can't carry it. So somebody has got to stand up. And, um, that, that was a very clear and well articulated call to action, uh, for me. And so, you know, I came back cause I'm like, all right, I'm, I'm a youth guy. I put, I don't know, at that point, 12 years into the sport, um, with my kids. And I, I got, you know, not all my boys play, uh, tackle football either. Um, uh, and so, uh, you know, I, if not me, then who is, that's kind of how I live my, my life. And that's what I, I, I kind of do for a living is, you know, you gotta, you gotta step into these, you gotta seize these opportunities in life when I show up. Yeah. That, coach, I, I mean, I got goosebumps from that. You know, I, 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 I did that, that, that's chilling to hear you say, you know, if not me, who, and, and want to step into a void. Um, I met some great, some great people through this whole, you know, youth football bill. Uh, a guy named Steve Famiano, who's right here in my hometown in, in Apple Valley, <laughs> which, which was just, you know, fascinating. As we started talking on Twitter, and he jumped right in with uh, kind of leading some stuff on social media. And then it was like, hey, where do you live? Where Apple Valley? Where do you live? Apple Valley. And then it, uh, you know, a, a guy named Ron White who uh, lives up in Bakerfield, Bakersfield, we, we had a press conference I put together at a large, you know, largest coaching clinic in California, the Glacier Football Clinic. And, uh, you know, he drove, I think it's about four hours down from Bakersfield just to be at that press conference and then sit and talk to me. And he, you know, he sent me messages, hey, I'd love a few minutes of your time. And I think we got together for two hours that night. I, I've met some tremendous people through this. Uh, Joe, Steve, and Ron kind of being those top three guys who have said football matters so much to me. I'm going to donate and and spend a great deal of my life for uh, 18 months fighting this bill. Coach, I'm very convinced, Joe, if, if we did not step up and specifically you, Steve, and Ron to start this alliance, I think this bill – gets passed and we don't have any youth tackle football. I'm really convinced of that. What, what are your thoughts on that? If, if we never stepped up to fight this thing, do you think it would have passed? We didn't step up to uh, oppose the, the, the ban last year, this past season would have been the last tackle football season in the state of California. Yeah, I, I think so. I mean, so, so talk to us, tell me what the state exactly was trying to do with banning youth tackle football here and, and where did that whole idea come from? How did it start to take any shape in Sacramento? So uh, uh, a couple of things, I, I'm not a, a political guy at all. I've never been. Um, so this was a huge learning experience and an eye opener for me. Absolutely. Um, and we had a lot of people what, wanted to give us advice, some good, some bad, right? Yep. Yep. Um, and, uh, so what happened was um, uh, Dr. Amalu paid a visit to uh, Assembly M Member McCarty in Sacramento and explained to him what's going on. Nowinski uh, from the Concussion Legacy Foundation uh, came in at some point as well, along with um, Kimberly Archie, and uh, uh, they they they're the ones that convinced assembly member McCarty to put this bill forward. And I recall in my first meeting with McCarty in his office, uh, Ron white uh, was with us uh, uh, along with a couple other guys. Um, McCarty asked us three times if we had seen the concussion movie and that if we had, we would understand that football is bad for our youth. Yeah, and you referred to Dr. Amalu. I'm, I'm sure most listening know who that is, but he, he was, you know, the one featured in that concussion movie, the founder of CTE, who recently came out and said he gave it that name, Chronic Traumatic Encephalopathy. I don't even know how to say that last word, because he wanted an intriguing name that would be confusing, is what he said. I, I find that fascinating. So so that's, yeah. that's one of the guys, yeah. Yeah. So he, he, and, and, you know, what I found was, um, my opinion is that McCarty has a perspective that he believes he needs to protect us from ourselves. Yeah, there you go. And, um, 
you know, I just, I, I, I don't agree with that. Right. And, and, and I said to him, I, you know, I said, look, I said, we're, we're Americans. We make things better. That's what we're doing here. And the, you know, there's a bunch of us around the, in, in this office right now, who've been doing this for years to decades, making the sport better at the youth level, walk to the party, pull up a chair. <laughs> we'd like, we'd like, we'd like to work with you. Yeah. And I made that offer. I made that offer three times in, in that, meeting we we'd like to work with you and and we brought our uh medical reference material uh, all the research including the research that he was quoting and uh he refused at one point he said it's not my job to advocate for your side of the of 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 the issue and that's when i said to him i said okay i said uh, i want to be really clear then against our preferences we you know we want to work with you 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 don't want to do that we we will oppose you yeah. And we will bring, we will bring force on force. You're, br- you're, you're bringing your force to us. We're going to match it. We're going to exceed it. And we're going to beat you in this bill. And, and we're highly organized grassroots across the state of California. You know, he, here's the thing, like Ron, Steve and I, these, you know, these, these guys are my brothers. I mean, I, I they, they're some of the closest men in my life. Um, brotherhood extends not just with the guys you were in the huddle with or you played with, but the people who, who had shared experiences. And so Ron and Steve and I really kind of banded together and, and, and rallied this, this football community up and down the state of California. And, and they responded. I mean, the, the salts of the earth, these wonderful individuals from Stockton, Sacramento, um, you know, uh, San Jose, Bakersfield, uh, you know, L.A., San Diego, everybody came together because they heard the call and they did what they needed to do to oppose this. That you know, we all, all we did in the alliance or in the, at, at this point, we were Save the Football California Coalition. We we provided our audience, our our community in California, a megaphone, and we directed their their words in a very in a very laser like fashion to have maximum impact and defeat the bill. Love how you said that. So, yeah, let's let's go to you know towards starting the California Youth Football Alliance. So, so what was the the next step, Coach, for for your leadership in this? So once we um once we got the uh, the word that the that that the bill was pulled, um, they get <laughs> we all had a big exhale. I mean, it was forty hours a week for eleven straight weeks. Yeah. Um, we all just kind of like uh, the, 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 the California coalition got on a call and we said, you know, let's, let's, let's take 30 to 45 days and, and, and get some time back with our fa- family. And so hold, let, let me um, cut you off there. Cause I, I don't think I didn't do a good enough job getting us to there. So we, tell yeah. us how the bill was pulled. What, what do you mean by that? Sure. So um, uh, the, the, the process for a bill to become a law in the state of California um, in, in this particular case was uh, the bill was um, going to uh, a committee in the assembly. If it made it through that committee, go to the assembly floor and get voted on. If it made it through that, it go to a Senate committee. If it made it through the Senate committee, it get voted on the Senate floor. And then it would go to the governor's desk for signature. So it's kind of a four to five step process. Um, before the bill got to the first committee in the assembly, it was pulled. And here's how it was pulled. It was scheduled to go on, on Tuesday, I believe it was May 1st. The Tuesday before that, um, April 26th, Ron and myself were in uh, Sacramento meeting with the assembly members who were on the committee to hear the bill. And we were there all day. We met with four or five or six of them. And, and this was, it was funny, as we're meeting with the assembly members, who were in this committee, some of them were actually co-authors on the bill and supportive of the bill. But we still met with them because we wanted to talk to them and we wanted to hear what they have to say and we wanted to explain our perspective of the bill and, and, and who we are as a youth tech football community. And uh, the phones were ringing off the hook. And we, we had launched a phone calling campaign the week before the bill was set to be heard to put pressure on the assembly so that they understood that this was not the will of the people. Yep. This was the will of a misguided assembly member, not the will of the people. 
And so that, that was a grassroots effect. So we're, we're walking the halls and, and, and we're walking into these rooms and the phone calls are ringing off the hook and people are giving us dirty looks because they, they <laughs> know it's, it's us behind this, right? So um, our last meeting that day was with Assembly Member Chu, who's the chair of the committee. He's actually a, a Democrat out of Santa Clara. And we, we, we showed him the bill to ban. We showed him our opposition letter. Um, uh, we had a three section opposition letter. First section was, this is why this bill is bad for our youth. Second section was, um, 15, 16, 17 medical research papers citing why this bill, why the science behind this bill is bogus. And then third was, if you are going to write a bill for you tackle football, here's 12 ideas that we recommend you consider. When we had that conversation with Assembly Member Chu, he turned to us and he said, it's clear that this bill as written cannot go forward. Yeah. Guys, if yeah. we were to write a bill, what would it look like? And we said, let's turn to section three of our opposition letter. Here's 12 ideas. And those ideas were things like 10 hours of non-contact before every um, youth tackle football starts contact in, in camp. The, those ideas were many current best practices that people don't understand in Sacramento or elsewhere are codified already in just as best practices, but not state law. Not as, yeah, not a so, mandate up and down the state. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it's, it's, you know, Pop Warner has some, AOF has some, independents have some, everyone's got all these best practices, but you tackle football is very splintered. It's very, it's very decentralized. It's not, it's not really actually very well organized and structured. Um, incidentally, making it very easy to attack. And so um, we put forward, and, and after we met on that Tuesday, for 48 hours afterwards, we were rewriting a bill with Assembly Member Chu, his office's uh, uh, support. That bill got presented to, um, with our content in it, got, got presented back to McCarty, and, and, and was, he was told, if you bring this bill forward, we will support it. If you bring your, fill, your, your current bill forward, forward i it, it it won't be supported and mccart said i'm not bringing any bill forward other than mine and that's how the bill got pulled and so the best of my recollection joe that that's the we're the first state that defeated it before there was even any kind of vote in the state correct correct we're the first state so we're the third state for it to get introduced the first one was maryland second one was illinois california was third we're the first state to defeat it before it ever got to committee. Yeah. In, in Maryland, it got into committee and, and defeated. In Illinois, it got into committee and approved. And then after it got approved, the author pulled the bill mm. before it went any, any uh, uh, further. And I know you've been, not only you, but you, Steve, and Ron have also been playing, having a leadership role because of our work here in California you guys have been uh, sought after and, and reached out to some of these other states, correct? Yeah. So when, when after that bill got pulled, we took that 35, 45 days off to get back to our families. Ron, Steve, and I reengaged in the late June, early July timeframe of 2019. And um, McCarty had already said by that point that he was going to bring another bill back. And so Steve, Ron, and I, decided to take the summer and we wrote a strategy um, that is now embodied in the California Youth Football Alliance. Um, and that's, and, and we designed the alliance directly, um, very consciously, very purposefully to be a state level entity, because that's where the conversation is when it comes to banning youth tackle football. That's, that's where the true governance function is. Um, there are lots of people out, you know, that, the, the, the real governing body for youth sports is, is in the state. It's not, it's not Pop Warner. It's not AYF. It's not USA Football. It's the local communities and the lawmakers inside each state. Yeah. And so we formed the alliance as a California football alliance, and we debated this. We discussed it. We talked about are we going to be a 501c3 or not? Did we organize? We went through all these discussions and decisions. We formed the alliance as a 501c3 in California. And we've helped to launch the Massachusetts Youth Football Alliance, um, as well as the New York Youth Football Alliance. And we're in conversations with 
uh, several other states to help them launch their own alliances at this point. Love it. That's that's amazing. So how you talked you talked a little bit about this assembly bill and it's assembly bill 1. How did you guys go about when I say you guys I mean you Steve and Ron, how did you go about writing i mean you're you're three youth football coaches right uh like you said no experience in politics before and that's an amazing part of this story how did you go about writing an assembly bill well so, t- um, tell us before you know, i say that before i say that tell us i'm going to tell you guys go to c-a-y-f-a stands for california youth football alliance c-a-y-f-a dot org okay and when if you're sitting in front of your computer when you're there if you go to legislation and then AB1 info sheet, okay, because we're going to spend a little bit of time here talking about how you guys wrote this bill and then how did you assess, you know, what needs to be in it, what doesn't need to be in it. Talk us through that process a little. Sure. So um, the, that, that process started when, you know, after we had that meeting on April 26th with, with Assembly Member Chu. Um, and, and it was it was actually in that opposition letter. In our very first opposition letter, the California um, uh, coalition, kind of the the five of us before we started the alliance, um, we had you know written that that letter and outlined these are the general things that we would content wise we would want to include in a bill. And they were as I said, they were they were best practices, right? These are things that we're doing now that people don't understand are, you know, alive and well in almost all of the youth tackle football organizations in the state of California. One of the things we learned is there is a really, really huge gap of understanding from Sacramento um, out to what, what's really going on with youth tackle football. Um, and, and you can't, you can't watch a concussion movie and, and pretend to know everything about youth tackle football. Yeah. So, so, um, it started with that opposition letter. Then, then we refined it by working with assembly member Chu's office. So we had the content and the expertise and then assembly member Chu's office helped us with a process. And so when, when on that, I guess Thursday, April 28th was the bull was, was when the bill was officially put pulled. We had a version of the bill that we ultimately brought forward for a AB one. It, it was already built. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And so, the, you know, the, the, the blessing in this is, you know, we, we spend the summer and we come up with our strategy and, you know, I need to tip my hat to assembly member Cooper. You know, he, he approaches us in October and he says, Hey guys, um, if you want to work together, you know, I'll, I will author the bill. If you guys, you know, kind of drive the content and really uh, sponsor this thing. And so through, through, you know, working with him and his incredible office, we, um, you know, we, we just formed this kind of like, you know, wonder twins activate kind of a thing. It was just this like great partnership and bond. Um, and we, uh, uh, you know, we, we, we had a kernel of a bill from the, the spring and we, we just kind of refined it and, and tweaked it and laid out a strategy of how we were going to uh, publish it and, and up it over the next three to four months. Awesome. That, that's amazing. And so the Youth Tackle Football Act, the California Youth Football Act, Assembly Bill 1, I love how it says the most comprehensive set of safety standards for youth tackle football in the country. So some of the things on here, youth tackle football coaches shall annually receive first aid, CPR, and AED certification. And I think a point you made earlier, Joe, a lot of, uh, of our, our groups, a lot of the organizations up and down California have been doing these things, right? But did did you find in your communications with lawmakers, lawmakers just had zero clue about what football programs have been doing? Yeah, it's it's you know it's funny. It's it's one of the reasons why we formed the alliance because um, that when we when we debated when we went through the bill to ban when we when we defeated that had a lot of conversations with Sacramento. What we learned was. There, there is a legitimate gap in knowledge and understanding of youth tackle football. So I got asked questions like, you know, are, are you a USA football league? 
who do you play for? And so, so they would ask us questions like, and do you, they just didn't understand who we are. And, and that, so we decided to form the Alliance because we wanted to step into that process of educating and informing everybody of really who is you tackle football? What are we doing? Where do we need to get better? How do we get better? Because we can't just, you know, when, when someone's threatening you, taking away something you love, you, you, you have to, you know, we, we decided to step into that conversation. And so a uh, major education process. And then with the bill, you know, the stuff that's in there, it's, it, it's, it's, I refer to it as it's current best practices. Yeah. Uh, like, you know, like an EMT at every game, right. Oh, and that, that's got a little bit of a specific California flavor. It's EMT, not athletic trainers. Cause EMTs are, are, recognized by the state athletic trainers aren't but in every other state in the nation we can put athletic trainers in there that's like a nuance in the bill um but we we took time to understand the current law affecting high school football in the state of california we followed that legislative intent that legislative pattern the cooley act um, and other acts that uh, that seeded ours it began to lay and, and kind of set a legislative direction for our sport. We wanted to be consistent with that and kind of advance what's already in place at high school level and bring it down to the youth level. So, for example, did you know that you can't play tackle football year round in California at the high school level? Yeah. Yeah, of course. Everybody knows that, right? Yeah. Did you know, did you know that you can at the youth level? Yeah. Yeah. That's an unbelievable thing. That doesn't make any sense to me, right? Like, so why, why would we allow that? So we said, okay, well, high school football, tackle football at the high school level can't go year-round. Well, that makes a lot of sense. It shouldn't happen at the youth level either. And so that's why we included that um, legislative content. So we kind of had best practices. We followed you know, high school, current legislative direction, and then we put in new things that we call you know, leading practices like injury tracking and reporting. You know, the put a discipline in place where we where, where people have to pay attention to the injuries that happen and, and you know raise awareness and raise you know a discipline and a rigor around you know looking after our kids. Coach, so you start having these conversations with lawmakers in Sacramento. How what was their you know receptivity to it? Did did you find them intrigued? Were were you just another appointment on the calendar? What was that like? So I, 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 I want to give, um, uh, you know, the, our state capital, a lot of credit on, on this one. Um, you know, we, we engaged a lot, um, quite frankly, in April of last year, I stopped working and went full time into this. I did nothing but work on, you know, advancing AB one from, April and it had been a, you know, a 30 hour a week job before that anyway, but I, I went full time into it. I took off from work and, um, just, we, we, we went on a full court press and we had conversations with, you know, those who were in favor of us. We had conversations with those who were neutral and we had conversations with those who had opposed us. And, um, you know, we, we educated people. Yeah. We explained to them, what, what, here's the current state of, of, of affairs. Here's reality. Here are best practices. Let's make things better. Again, we're Americans. We don't ban things. Like we don't make the world better by banning things. We make the world better by improving it, by putting, okay. If, if we have safety concerns, which, which, oh, by the way, there's a bunch of us who've been working on this for a while. Let's accelerate our ability to create a safer sport in youth tackle football. Let's not eliminate it. Let's accelerate it. And these are, you know, through this AB1, we have the opportunity to accelerate. And, and so um, lots of conversations. The best conversation, were, but the one conversation that, I mean, from, from my, it's one of the best because it's one of the greatest things that we heard. Um, we were told at one point that, um, the California Youth Football Alliance is modern democracy in action. And here's why. Love it. The, the, somebody brought a cause under the table. They wanted to ban youth, youth tackle football. 
whether it was, you know, best intentions or worst intentions, somebody did that. Here's a group of volunteers who rise up. We bring our competence. We have 80 years of youth tackle football experience in the alliance across Steve, Ron, and I. 80 years of experience. We bring our, our competence and expertise, and we, we stop a bad thing from happening, and then we invest our own time and energy and money into putting a bill in place that is going to make our state better, going to make a better environment for our, our youth with respect to tackle football. And when, when this um, office said, said that, uh, I was – it's one of these things, Chris, you know, you just, you're just trying to do what's right. Yep. Right. You're trying to, yep. you know, you care about this sport almost, almost like you care about your kids. And it's, and, and it's, you just want to do what's right. And so you step up and people start saying, Hey, this, this is modern democracy in action. And it's like, Oh, oh Whoa, this is, this is big. And, and, um, you know, we, we, we relied on truth. We relied on facts. We relied on our competence. Um, and you know, the, the, in this case, we think, you know, the right answer, um, uh, has, uh, has won. And so coach talk us through, um, talk us through AB one in terms of anything new that was added in assembly bill one that you thought was important that really no organizations were doing yet. Yeah, that, that, the, for me, the, the, the injury tracking and reporting is, that that's where the industry is going to go. And when I say the industry, I don't just mean youth tackle football. I mean, youth sport in general. Um, we, we need good data. And, and the way that we get that is by tracking injuries. And, and, you know, part of our philosophy is we want to accelerate the transformation, the evolution of youth tackle football in a medically informed way, solid medical science. You know, the only thing we love more than youth tackle football are the kids. Mm. And so we want to do what's right. And so, yeah, there's this thing called CTE. And yes, concussions are, you know, this emerging, um, you know, reality that all sports have to deal with, um, including cycling and swimming and, you know, everything's got to deal with it. So um, we want to advance safety and Youth tackle football is the is the sport that is most under attack. Oh, by the way, for your listeners across the country, we are under attack in the youth tackle football space by a very well funded group of individuals, and the, the the headquarters of that is the Concussion Legacy Foundation, and they are out to eliminate our sport tackle football, and they're not going to stop at the youth level. I've had conversations with these individuals one-on-one -on -one in phone calls. And they've told me, we're starting in youth tackle football, and then we're going to you know, move on. They're coming after high school. And so you know, this is not just a youth issue. This really is a, you know, a, it's a, it's a tackle football industry issue from youth to high school to college and, and ultimately up in, in, into the pros. Why do you think that is, Joe? Uh, so I'm a big believer to follow the money. Uh. Um, and right now there are a lot of people who are profiting off of CTE. Um, their, 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 their research, uh, is bogus. And when I say a lot of, I mean the concussion legacy foundation, I'll, 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 I'll be uh, direct on this one. You know, they're funding research in what I would call a hypocritical way. And what I mean by that is if you dig under the covers and I've downloaded multiple years of annual annual reports from the concussion legacy foundation and spent time digging through them to understand their business. And when you look at that, you know, they're uh, really simple. Uh, let me, let me say this as simply as possible. Chris Nowinski is a former WWE wrestler who had to retire because he got a concussion and he's consistently funded to the tune of multiple millions of dollars by the WWE. I never sued them for his injuries, but there's class action lawsuits going after the WWE for the injuries that the wrestlers have received over the years because all the wrestlers were not employees. They were contractors. So the WWE never had to pay a, 
um, medical uh, uh, bills for any of their uh, any of their contractors. So it's 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 a really kind of deep, um, complex web of funding of media of marketing of pursuing new business models like flag football and trying to make money off that. And the, the connection there is, um, you know, the chief strategy officer for Under Armour is on the board of the Concussion Legacy Foundation. And oh, by the way, many of you across the country will know that Under Armour is currently launching flag football leagues all over the country because that's another 150 bucks of fees and jerseys that they get to sell and brands that they get to put in in the, our local communities. So there's a, there's a complex web of that going here. It take longer to explain than, you know, than, than, uh, of the podcast. Ho- hopefully I've, I've, I've kind of, uh, you know, sketched out and enough of that here, Chris, and it's, it's not, um, overly complex. Yeah, no, you have, that's, I, I did not know that about Under Armour. That's, uh, that's fascinating. So yeah, I mean, you're, you're talking about a whole culture, a whole business, a business model revenue, business, business, blah, business revenue model being created with the attack on youth football, right? Absolutely. And so if I, the, the best way to grow my bit or a way to grow my business is to kill my competition. There you go. There you go. Create, create that vacuum. You put together one of the things I was real impressed with Joe, with this California youth football Alliance is you guys put together a medical advisory board. Can you talk me a little bit through why you put together a medical advisory board? Uh, you know, maybe highlight a few of those members and what they have done and what they're doing with California. Yeah, sure. So, uh, so when we faced that, when we, when we decided to launch the Alliance, you know, we, we said, look, we have to form officially an, an entity and that entity needs to be mission based. So we're going to be a 501 C three. And we did that because this conversation on youth, on youth tackle football, this is not like a one and done. This is not a transaction. This is a process that's going to play out over years to decades of improving the safety and the experience for youth tackle football players here in the state of California and, and the country. So when you take that view, when you make the commitment, say, all right, this is a decade long process. This is not, you know, beat bill and, you know, let's just go back to the way things were. Um, because the politicians aren't going to do that, and the Concussion Legacy Foundation is not going to do that either. Yep. So we're in this gonna, thing for the long run. Rest. Yeah, they're not going to rest. Right. And so you you look at the opposition, you say, all right, they're 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 selling fake science. Um, so what are we going to do about that? Well, you know, we're a bunch of football guys. Um, you know, you know, I like to say, like, look, I'm just a football guy and a dad, right? I'm a, I'm a businessman. You know, I'm just trying to live my life and, and you, know, you know, leave a good legacy for, you know, my, my family and my name. Yep. And so, you know, we need some insight here. We need some expertise. We need more than just the three of us. And so we started with, you know, coincidentally, um, um, Merrill uh, Hodge and Dr. Peter Cummings launched uh, the Brainwash book yeah. in the fall of this past year, fall of 2019. And uh, no, fall of 2018, they launched uh, our brainwash in the fall of 2018. And so we look at that and we're like, Oh my gosh, you know, we go, oh, this is, this is awesome. So I buy the book the first day it's out, I read it. And I say to Steven around, I go, look, there's our first board members. We've got to get Merrill and Pete on our board. And so we had a call with them in December of 2018. Um, when we had our first offsite as the Alliance in Ventura, California, um, met Merrill for the first time on the phone. We invited them to be on our board and they, they agreed. Um, Merrill for all of his passion and all of his knowledge and expertise with football and, and his, his, um, his courage. Um, I find his courage to be uncommon with people who, who have his background and experience in terms of speaking out, um, on behalf of tackle football. Um, and so, you know, they're on the board. And they now we have, you know, celebrity and with NFL, you know, experience at the highest level. And we have a PhD doctor who can, as as he will tell you, if you ever get a chance to talk to him, if you listen to our our uh, podcast uh, in in the Alliance, 
um, you know, Pete will tell you, you know, he's a, he's a legit doctor. He can open you up on the table and, you know, take your appendix out. He, he's, he's that kind of a doctor. Uh, coincidentally, um, the doctor, uh, Nowinski from, uh, the concussion legacy foundation is not that kind of doctor. Um, so, uh, you know, we, we got credibility now from a science perspective and, and with Pete, you know, we then said, all right, Pete, love you. I want to build this out. You know, we need to represent a cross section of the medical community and have their advising counsel to benefit the youth tackle football folks in the state of California. And so with Pete's help, we built that out. I think there's 10 members on Mac. It might be 12. Um, and it includes, um, uh, lots of different people from across the country. So we have uh, national uh, athletic trainers. We have um, Dr. Erin Reynolds out of um, uh, the Dallas, Texas area. She is a neuropsychologist. We have Dr. Mickey Collins out of the University of Pittsburgh Medical Center. He founded that um, and is, is really the prevailing thought leader with respect to concussion and head safety. And he's... Um, uh, the UPMC is the is the premier concussion treatment facility in, in our country. Uh, back here in California, we have uh, um, uh, the concussion uh, uh, California Concussion Institute. Uh, Dr. S- uh, Sangal Benny, uh, as a member of the, of, of, the uh, of the MAC, he's also the chief um, medical officer for the 49ers and the Giants. So we and, and there's more. I I. I um, I'm not doing the Mac justice with the credibility of Dr. James McDonald, who's a sports physician out of national children's hospital. Um, just, just, I mean, just the who's who of doctors that cover everything that our youth tackle football community could ever want or need, um, orthopedists, et cetera. So these guys are at our, you know, they're, they're, they're partners in, in, in our work. They endorse what we're doing in the Alliance and when we have questions, we you know approach with a lot of different perspectives and people trying to you know convince us that they have this solution or that solution. You know we we lean on them to kick tires as it relates to science and you know any solutions we we might look at endorsing or or um, you know um, in, in, engaging. And I'm constantly thinking, and Pete, with you know as these new research documents come out, you know Pete, what you think on this? You know how how, how does this you know is this something that is good is bad you know how do we how should we respond to it so it's uh they're a great group of individuals and and frankly a competitive differentiator for us in the market yeah i think all those folks had a chance to sit and meet uh dr aaron uh reynolds up in sacramento when we were up there as you testified you know about this bill becoming a law, and uh boy she's a very very bright person so we are lucky to have this wisdom and insight and, and great job putting that, that, uh, Mac together. So coach, as we wrap this thing up, what's next for youth football here in California? So, uh, AB one goes into effect January of 2021. So this is our last year of, you know, the, the, the pre AB one era, uh, right now, the California football Alliance is putting together, um, uh, solutions and, and memberships. We're talking about memberships now that uh, the Utah football community in the state of California will be able to um, buy memberships from us to implement solutions that will help them become compliant with AB1. I want to be really clear about this as I know the Utah football community. We are a 100% volunteer organization. We are building this organization to serve you and to provide solutions that will advance, honor, improve, and advance our sport in the state of California. So these memberships are going to are going to be for things like where are you going to get your insurance for next year? Um, uh, how do you get your coaches trained in a way that's compliant with AB1? So we're not we're not charging for things that you don't need, um, and we want to offer you know multiple price points and even uh, you know access to funding and grants and things like that. So the, the next phase of the alliance is really kind of building out now that, su- that really support mechanism that doesn't exist anywhere else in the country um, for California, tailored for California, so that, so that we can help all the tackle football community it, you know, be, uh, become compliant, be ready for compliance for AB1 here in 2021. 
All right. That, that's amazing. You guys are doing some great work. Again, go to cayfa.org, cayfa.org. Joe, tell us where uh, where that our listeners can find you personally and can find out more information about the California Youth Football Alliance. Talk a little bit about uh, social media, podcasts you guys have, et cetera. Sure. Awesome. Thanks. So uh, you can email me at joe at cayfa.org. Uh, you can find me uh, on Twitter at Save Youth FB. Um, you can find us online, as as uh, Coach uh, suggested. And the, the other thing you can do, you, we have a podcast as well. Um, it's the, it's it's called the uh, Chain Crew, and uh, you can find it on on our website. You can find it on your you know your your favorite uh, I, I, uh, podcast site. Um, reach out, let us know. Um, you can follow us on Facebook. California Football Alliance. You can find all of our links off our website. Um, and, you know, the, the one thing I would say is for the high school football community, you know, we, I work with a lot of high schools as, as well in, in terms of I, I feed four or five different high schools here, and I have a high school football player as well. Um, the one thing I would ask is, you know, from, from our alliance perspective, you know, we want to ask the high school football community to hug the youth tackle football community, bring them in close, support them, need your help. You guys are like our big brothers uh. and we need that connection to the high school football community. And what, what, what I, you know, what I would encourage you to have a conversation with your youth tackle football community. And it sounds something like this. Um, what, what, what I say to my high school football uh, uh, coaches who I feed is I'm my, my aspiration is I'm going to deliver you a player that meets three criteria. Number one, they're going to be technically, they're going to have excellent technique. They're going to know their position and they're going to play a position from a technique perspective very, very well. Meaning they're going to keep their head out of tackle, things like that. Number two, they're going to be a competitor. They're going to want to step on the field and they're going to want to compete, play hard and do their very, very best. As a, as a high school football player. And third, they're going to have low mileage, meaning I'm not, I'm not going to, I, I don't want to deliver you a, a, a football player who's had a ton of injuries and who I'm running into the ground for my own glory and my own trophies. Absolutely. Everything I'm doing, everything I'm doing as a youth football organization is trying to build my high school program. That's my goal. And I want more kids playing than you know, uh, next year than we do this year. So if you have a conversation around that, I think that th those are really healthy um, and, and supportive and, and constructive ways to start the conversation. Because if you, quite honestly, if you start it around playbooks and X's and O's, it's probably going to get a little bit hard at first. But if you buy into a mission and a purpose of being in that relationship together, then I think the, you know, the, uh, the potential is uh, unlimited. Such a great point. So make sure to follow Joe and the Youth California Youth Football Alliance, those different avenues he gave. Joe, thank you for your time. Much appreciated. I know you're a busy guy. Got a family weekend. What are you guys doing the rest of the day? I got a, uh, my, uh, my fifth graders playing in the semifinal basketball game in the city. Um, I got to go pick up my, uh, my uh, sophomore in high school. He's up uh, riding horses. Uh, and my oldest is uh, hanging around the house, my, my junior high school football player, and maybe uh, maybe got a bite to eat with my wife uh, this evening. All right, Coach. You guys have a great day, and thank you for your time. Real pleasure, Coach. Thanks.